Okay, in today's video, as you can see, I'm going to go over a Coulomb's law problem. We have three charges in this problem. And this is the situation we have. We have this three charges set up in the triangular arrangement, and we want to find the magnitude and the direction of the force on Q3. This is Q3. Q3 is 65 microcoulombs. Q1 is minus 50 microcoulombs, and Q2 is 75 microcoulombs. And again, we want to know the magnitude and the direction of the force the resultant force, total force on Q3. Now, in order to determine the magnitude of the force, we're going to use Coulomb's law. But in order to determine the direction, which we're going to do first, we're just going to use the fact that we have positive and negative charges, and we're going to figure out whether they're going to uh, repel or attract each other. So first of all, we'll do Q1, since Q1 is number one. The force on three from one, this is a negative, this is a positive, opposite Charges attract each other, so therefore the force on Q3 from Q1 is going to point in the negative y direction or point in that direction. Okay, that's just the direction. That's not the magnitude. First, we're going to do the directions of each, and then we're going to get the magnitudes, and we have to add all that stuff up together. But I like to do the directions first. Now, what about the direction of the force on 3 from 2? Well, these are both positive charges. Positive charges repel each other, so Q2 is going to repel Q3 along this line. So this is the direction of the force on 3 from 2. Now, I didn't worry too much about how long I drew the arrows. All I really want to know is the direction when we think about and we calculate the magnitude, and then we can talk about the length of the arrows, the arrows or the length of the vector force vectors. Okay? So this is the force on 3 from 1. This is the force on 3 from 2. Now, in the next slide, we're going to actually calculate the magnitude of the force. Here's our diagram. Here's our forces using Coulomb's law. We're just going to apply Coulomb's law straightforward. First, we'll do the force on 3 from 1. K, Q, Q, R squared. Okay, Q, Q is Coulomb's constant, 9 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared Coulomb squared. Q1 is 65 microcoulombs. We have to convert this to Coulomb because our unit is in Coulombs. We can't leave it in microcoulombs. Q2 now, let's see, that's Q1. Now, that's actually Q3. Since I have F3 here, I put 3 first. And then Q1 is 50 microcoulombs. You notice this is negative. When we calculate the magnitude, we don't use the negative and the positive signs, so to speak. We don't use the negative signs. We determine the direction with whether the forces, uh, rip, what do they call that, repel or attract. Okay? And then we're going to square the distance between them. It's 0.73 meters. Square that. And you get that the force on 3 from 2 acts in this direction, and the magnitude of the force is 214 newtons. All right, now let's do the same thing for 3, 2, the force on 3 from 2. Again, Coulomb's law, Coulomb's constant. Again, F3, 65 microcoulombs. This time F2 is 75 microcoulombs, and the distance between them squared, and you get that the force on 3 from 2 is 80 newtons, okay? So now we know the direction and the magnitude of those two forces, and we'll deal with that in the next slide. We know, as we figured out in the previous slide, F31 is 214 newtons. F32 is 80 newtons. And I try to draw them a little bit to scale. This one is obviously longer than this one. This force is directly on the y-axis. This force is acting between the x and the y-axis, and that means we have to break this vector decompose this vector into its x and y components. So this vector, F32, has a component in the y direction, and it also has a component in the x direction, F32y and F32x. And we're going to use our trig functions to decompose this vector. You should remember that we had a 30, 60, 90. We had a 60 degree, a 90 degree, and a 30 degree. If this was 60 degrees, then that means that this angle right here is also 60 degrees. So you should be a right triangle, we know one of the sides, the hypotenuse. We want to find out the other two sides. We know the angle, trig. F32x. X, F32x is the on, on the opposite side of the angle, so we use the sine function, and we get that F32x is the sine of 60 degrees times 80 newtons times the hypotenuse, and we get that the length of that side is 69 newtons. Then we have F32y is the cosine, it's the adjacent side, and the cosine of 60 times 80 is 40 newtons, okay? Now, we know we only have one force acting in the x direction. So the total force acting in the x direction is 69 newtons. We calculate that. That's this force. But you'll notice now, in a sense, we have two forces, that y component 
of 3, 2 and 3, 1 acting in the y direction, and they're acting in opposite directions, so we're going to add them up in a sense. We're going to subtract 3, 2, y from 3, 1, and we get that, that total force, the resultant force in the y direction is F3, 1 minus F3, 2, and that gives us 214 newtons minus 40, and that tells us that the total force acting in the y direction is 174 newtons. So now we really have our two forces, one in the x, one in the y direction, 69 newtons, and in the y direction, 174 newtons, and now we can figure out the resultant force of those two. And here we have the force in the x direction is 69. The force in the y direction is 174. I can add these two vectors up now head to tail. I'm going to move the y1 over, and the resultant force, the net force acting on Q3, is simply this represented by this vector. Now, once again, we have trig, Pythagorean theorem. In this case, we know the two sides, and we want to figure out the hypotenuse and the angle. So let's see, what are we going to do first? Oh, this is the angle. I'm going to designate this as the angle, theta. And in order to find the angle, I'm going to use the tangent, because I know the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite is Fy, the adjacent is Fx. I'm going to divide Fy by Fx. Fy is 174, Fx is 69. Divide that, I get the tangent of the angle is 252. I have to take the inverse tangent, I get theta. This angle right here is 68 degrees. So this angle is 68 degrees. If you start with the, this x-axis is zero, you go all the way around, it's 180 plus that, and you get 248 degrees. So the direction of the force is in that direction either 60 to 8 degrees below the negative x-axis or 248 degrees from the positive if you count this way counterclockwise, third quadrant. Okay, now we need to find out the length of this side or the length of the hypotenuse or the magnitude of the force. It's really just a triangle. We're going to use uh, the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. We want to solve for c squared, which means c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. A squared is 69 squared, B squared is 174 squared, and C turns out to be 187 newtons. So that means that the net force from those two charges that we started with, the net force, the magnitude of the force is 187 newtons. This vector is 187 newtons long, and it's at an angle 68 degrees below the negative x-axis. Okay, so there you go. That's all there is to it. It is a little bit, but if you go step by step, write everything down, follow those steps, I think it works out pretty well. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, you can do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up for this video, and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.